Hi, and welcome to How and Why, with me, Phil Cohen. Today we're going to look at the Amida, the standing prayer, and go through some of the details as to how to do it and why we do it. The, the word Amida comes from Tehillim, Psalms 106, verse 30, where it talks about Pinchas standing up and praying. And for that reason, we stand when we pray, and the, the, the prayer gets its name, Amida, which means to stand. So when we start to, to make the Amida, um, we always face towards the Ark, towards the East, um, whichever one of those we can, we can find. We're facing towards Jerusalem, and that's the way our intentions should be directed. We're praying towards the Temple, um, towards Jerusalem. So if you're, if you're East of Jerusalem, um, then you would face towards um, the other direction. We've, we stand with our feet together, um, because we, 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 we make ourselves like angels. Angels, we are told, have one leg. And they stand um, in, in a sort of upward, upward direction like this. Um, we are aligning ourselves with angels because angels um, are, are very much subjugated to God's will. And when we're standing in the media, what we are doing is we are aligning our will with Hashem's will. We... Start the, the intentions that we should have, the, the thought processes we should have, the consciousness we should have during the Amida, the Kavana, as it's called in Hebrew, is that we, is at two or three different levels. At an outer, at a sort of meta level, if you like, we should have in mind that we're standing before the Rabbana Shalom, the, the creator of the universe, the master of the world. Everything from the large Hadron Collider particles that we are finding every day, these small minuscule subatomic particles, right up to the big stuff that's been found by Kepler and, and all these other space telescopes in the outer reaches of the universe. God is the master and the creator of all of these things, both through space and through time. And that, and we are standing directly in front of God when we, when we, when we pray the Amida. Um, we, and, and that's the sort of uh, we should, that's, that's how we start so normally there's a half Kaddish before the Amida which helps us sort of get into that frame of mind as well um, we should also if we can have in mind when we say God's name um, at, sometimes at the beginning of the blessing but mostly at the end of the blessing uh, we should also when we are saying God's name have in mind that he is the master of the universe the creator of the world on top of that um, if one can, it's always advisable to, to be able to, to, to know the meaning of each of the words that we're saying. And, and there, are, there are translations that you can get there into linear tritsidurum that you can get the way you can follow along with the English translation. It's not essential, but it's always good to, to understand what you're doing. So, um, in terms of... Uh, okay, so whenever we, whenever we, when we start the Amida, we take three steps forwards. Well, we actually start by taking three steps back first, and then we take three steps forwards. Um, they, they need to be pigeon, they can be pigeon steps, and obviously if you're confined by space, um, then, you, then you make the steps accordingly. Um, but we find that whenever anyone prays in the Bible or, or, or elsewhere um, through Tanakh, um, they always go through three stages of preparation. So, uh, for example, Abraham went on a three-day journey before he, he went to, uh, to, to Mount Maria with, with, uh, with Isaac. And so uh, Moses um, went through three stages of preparation, three days of preparation at Mount Sinai. And uh, right up to Queen Esther, uh, who um, had three days of preparation before she went to see the king Ahasuerus. These three steps can be, um, can be uh, equated to like starting a conversation with God. So the fourth step would obviously be the conversation itself. Three steps being, firstly, you introduce yourself. Secondly, you specify the relationship you have with the individual, with God, the way he relates to us. And thirdly, we talk about the person themselves. We do that in the Amida, for example, in the first three blessings. We start off by talking about ourselves as being descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. We then talk about how God relates with the world, how he sustains it with, with chesed, with, with kindness. And then we talk about uh, Kadesh, that God is, 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 is embodiment of Kedusha. So those are the three steps we go through, and that's represented by the three steps we take forwards before we start the Amida. Similarly, at the end of the Amida, we take three steps back to sort of, as we, uh, as we descend from that level, uh, back away um, from the place of prayer. So we've, we've taken this, the, the three steps back so that we can take the three steps forward. 
Um, and we start the amida. When we're talking, we talk in a volume just so loud enough so that we can hear. It's got to be in a, in a whisper, even if it's noisy outside or around you, um, it should be in a, in a, in a, in just, just loud enough so that you hear, but so that your neighbour can't hear. We should also keep in mind that it's um, something to mention, I didn't mention earlier, that you should really look to be in a place where you're uh, di- uh, avoid, you, where you can avoid distractions, obviously the best place for that is going to be in shul. But if you're going to pray at home or elsewhere, it's good to find a place where you're away from other people, and even in shul, to, to give yourself space around you so you can move those three steps as well. Before, when you start, you bend your knees at the word boruch, and then you bow down forwards, arching your back at the word atol. By the time you get to the third word, God's name, you should be upright. We always stand upright for God's name. Um, as I say, it's important, particularly for the first bracha, to understand the meaning of the word you're saying, how we're descendants from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that gives us a right to stand before God, and how God is above the physical, the physical world, and he controls the physical world. When we end, we end um, similarly with three blessings. And the three blessings at the beginning and the three blessings at the end pretty much stay the same throughout the year for all the Amidas that we say. But similarly, we bow at the first of the three blessings at the end, Modim, which is giving us thanks and acknowledgement of God. But we bow slightly differently where we just bow at the waist, bow forwards. And then at the end of the blessing, again, bow in the same way, Boruch, Atar, and then Hashem's, upright for Hashem's name. We end with um, the familiar phrase, uh, with, with, um, with the blessing for peace, and then we, we, we tag on an end, a prayer that our, our blessing should be accepted and the words of our lips should, come, should, should, be, uh, should be meaningful before God and, and should, should uh, be accepted before God. And of course, we end with the famous phrase, as says, Shalom bin Ramav, that God, who creates peace in the heavens, should create peace for us here on earth. Not just in terms of a ceasefire, in terms of a lack of violence, but also in terms of aligning our spiritual aims with our physical, our physical means. Hope you found that helpful, and please God, we should have more videos that will be useful to you. Bye.